This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Canine Crew, it's time to just sell the damn thing. Doberman Dan is revealing his contrarian formula for getting a rush of new customers, building your business faster, and making the highest possible profits. Go to JustSellTheDamnThing.com to get your copy today. Prepare yourself for the uncensored. Nothing held back. No BS reality of how business and life really work. Doberman Dan is off the chain. You are listening to the Off the Chain Show. Welcome back, Canine Crew, to another fun-filled edition. Guess what? We are picking up where we left off last week, so let's jump into it. You had a lot more income to replace with with an online business. Especially when I didn't know what I was doing, and it was just me. I was the only person in my whole business. And I had to learn everything from cassettes and uh, MP3s from all these American gurus at the time, people like Yannick Silva and Marlon Sanders and uh, Jason Potash, um, Brad Fallon, all these people emerged. John Reese had just done his million-dollar day, and I took huge inspiration from that. I'm thinking, hang on, you know, this guy could be a genius or, or whatever, but you know, he's still a human, probably puts his pants on one leg at a time. No, I mean, John Reese Stradamus is actually a very clever human, <laughs> as it turns out, uh, now that he's a friend of mine. Uh, and I've uh, spent a fair bit of time chatting with him in the last year or two uh, when we've really strengthened that friendship. We've even been fishing on Sydney Harbour. And he he, uh, he is actually very clever. He's really inspirational. But I'd, I was also reading the Gary Halbert letter at around about this time. I was hearing about people like Ed Dale. And, you know, I'm starting to join up some of the dots. But it was so hard. It's one of the hardest things ever. There's been several hard moments in my life. It was like getting that sales job. It was uh, um, learning about online marketing. It was quitting my job. It was... Uh, you know, completely re-engineering my life five years ago, just like changing everything, learning to surf. Um, it's been a, another recent battle. And then the and then the absolute most recent one is publishing this damn book because that was hard work. Uh, that's the most hard work I've had for years. And like all these things that are very, very hard at the time, you're glad when you've done them in hindsight. But talking about my story now, I mean, it really does take me back to to some of those moments where, yeah, there was even there was so many twists and turns. And that's what made my book hard to write because there's so much I could have shared. I had a very successful client who had a motorcycle franchise. He had three motorcycle stores selling four different brands, and he invited me to to go partners with him to take half the business. And I looked at the numbers. I registered a business. I hired my accountant and my lawyer to do due diligence. It cost me like eight and a half thousand dollars. It was extremely expensive for me at that time. I, that doesn't seem like much to me now, but when I'm on a job and that's like my after-tax income for the month, that was just a massive hit. And you know what they told me, Dan? They said, "Don't do it." Oh, really? <laughs> why? Why was that? Because he had a, a couple of other businesses that he was doing building developments, which was his main sort of focus, but they were all cross collateralized. And if any of those business projects went bust, it would have sucked the motorcycle business dry because they were tied together in the paperwork. And, you know, I believe this is the sort of thing that's actually happened to a friend of mine where they got their business went broke because of a different business. It even happened to my dad. That's how he got made redundant because a, another sister business went broke and they had to pull the money out of the other one. So it's kind of a Rob Peter to pay Paul scenario. The other thing that put me off was I remember meeting this guy and his wife and I had a really nasty vibe from the wife. She was like, because you're not going into business with a person. You're going into business with the person's wife, I think. So true. <laughs> and I learned this one. She was saying to me, because uh, I said, look, 
my salary is 300000 now. I would really like to, to draw a salary from this business. I'm going to probably need, like I can't survive for any less than 180000 She goes, well, I think you could draw 100000 She goes, what are you prepared to sacrifice? And that's the way she said sacrifice. She had this very strong Armenian accent, actually. And she's like, what are you prepared to sacrifice? <laughs> I'm thinking, I had like pictures of some guy strung up on a cross with, crown of thorns and blood coming out of his <laughs> nail holes. I, I don't want to be in business with these people. And now my my you know my team is saying, don't do it. So it was a no. So all I'm left with is an $8,000 bill and a business that I've just registered, which was uh, called the Shramco Family Trust. And it's that entity that, that uh, is behind super fast business to this day. That's how it started. It was born out of adversity. And then I had to, you know, I just plugged my own business onto it in the end. So how I mean, interesting. We could look. talk for, for months and I could still tell you the things that have transpired, but a lot of them revolve around interesting moments with customers because the sort of people you deal with at Mercedes Benz are, are quite interesting and they're almost all business owners, which really struck me. And I combined the insights that I was learning from the wonderful Jay Abraham and uh, you, know, you know anyone I could get get access to I was reading so much I really do value buying business information that you can apply and get results it's the business that we're in now the, the solutions I've created were always customer driven or self-driven. I wrote a book that I would like to have given myself when I was 18. I've created a coaching community that I wish was around 10 years ago because it would have saved me a lot of misery. And, and that's a great model for for writing a book, creating a business. In fact, talk more about super fast business. Born out of adversity, born out of that whole business deal just not coming together, even though you, it sounded like a great opportunity. So, so talk more about super fast business, what you do, how you, how you've structured this to, to support your lifestyle rather than your life revolving around your business. Well, it's a bit simple from, from my perspective, I've got people who are willing to share me. So they all pay a, a membership. Most of them pay an annual membership and it's in the region of a thousand dollars a year for most people. Uh, these days, you pay a little more to join, but it's a thousand dollars a year if, from year two onwards. So, let's imagine I've got um, usually the numbers somewhere around between five hundred to six hundred current paid-up members sharing me, paying a thousand bucks a year each, and for that. I log in and answer their questions and they also get to talk to each other and they consume my previous event recordings and I put on a, a new training each month. And the trainings are pretty interesting for them because it might be how to sell a recurring subscription membership on autopilot without ever having to pick up the phone or doing big launches or even running ads. And I'll make that training and that's very valuable to them. I think... I would suggest some people would charge $1,000 for that one training. I have other trainings like how to retain a customer because if you're doing any kind of subscription business, the enemy is churn. The thing that will kill a subscription business more than anything else is the fact that people leave. So you must keep people. And I did a whole training on just that topic and I introduced things to people they've probably never seen anywhere else. And this just comes from running subscription businesses for about – eight or nine years now. Uh, so that's what it is now. That's from my perspective. From a customer's perspective, they're getting good information and personal private coaching customized to them for a thousand bucks a year. So it is a, it's what you guys call a no brainer for yeah, anyone that's who's a huge able to value. Say. And and plus it is especially huge. because uh, the biggest complaint of entrepreneurs, I don't care if they're a brand new beginning on the kitchen table entrepreneur, you know, or somebody with a thousand locations who's been at it, you know, 50 years, the biggest complaint you've, you always hear is they feel alone. 
Like, you know, nobody really understands me. I don't know who to go to when I have questions or just want to run things by them. So providing that to your people is a huge value. Yeah, I mean, I think the key to success is, um, I learned from Peter Drucker here, it's about doing the right things. And the whole premise of my book is that you don't actually even have to do that much as long as it's the right thing. I'll give you a wild example. You could just have one offer, like uh, think of that coat of arms thing, right? If you just had one offer and it's a good one and you just do that and don't worry about you know, printing T-shirts or having royalties to uh, DVD sales or, or whatever, if you just did one thing and you did it reasonably okay to the right people at the right time, you're going to be fine. So I help people figure out what the right things are. And most of the time, I'm giving people less work to do. I'm removing stuff off their plate. I'm saying, you know what? Don't worry about this, that, that, or that, or that. Just this. Of all the things you got, this. And you're absolutely right about community because that's what I do. I nurture a community. I grow a tribe. I visit them. I've met most of my members, and not many people could say that. And the big thing that is substantially different about my community to most other communities is that I show up. As that used to drive me mental. <laughs> when I did invest in other people's communities, the founders were nowhere to be seen. It was like <laughs> everyone else talking to each other. And where's where's the guy running the show or the lady running the show? She, she's not there, absent, off drinking pina coladas, spending the money <laughs> I just invested in her. So I thought that was interesting. So if you go back to the the birth of my community, I'm not sure if that would be interesting for you or not, but that would probably be relatable to people who might be at that stage. Yeah, I would I would like to hear about the birth of this because you've built you've built an incredible business and and you know, people were having you speak from stages all over the world talking about that. So please share. So I was um at this stage I was a super affiliate and I'd been driving a lot of traffic to offers and uh, so, you know, things were going pretty well. I had my my own info product. I had um, affiliate commission I was getting one time. I'd started getting affiliate commission by promoting other people's communities as an affiliate, but they wouldn't show up and people would stop subscribing. And then I was on the side doing CPA offers. And uh, in some cases, so I was spending you know, three, four, five thousand dollars a day on ads, and there was this one product I was selling where I'd spend four or five thousand dollars a day, and I'd make eight or nine thousand dollars in sales. So it was a good business. So in a, in any month, I was generating a pretty big credit card bill for my AdWords costs and my. Um, so I was running ads on Facebook, you know, when it, when the very first Facebook ads could be run, and. I was running ads on 7Search and AdBright and all these other platforms as well as AdWords. And the problem was this business that I was selling stuff for, that firstly, they'd pay me in, on a delayed basis. And secondly, uh, they went broke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we sold not a, good a lot of their stuff and they couldn't fulfill this physical product and people canceled their orders or did chargebacks. And then I got left holding my advertising costs in the end. And we ran into this, the first Christmas since I quit my job, I had a cash flow crisis because I had put all the profit from my other business divisions into running ads to, to get the big commission. And the commission checks were coming, but they were on delay. And then the last one didn't come. And we rolled into Christmas and I'm like, so I can't buy my kids Christmas presents. In fact, there's... there's like we're right down to the last amount where I couldn't even go out and buy a cappuccino. You know, I wasn't broke. I wasn't bankrupt. I wasn't um, on a park bench. I still had cash flow coming in from my other business, but I just had this one time dip and I'm like, right, that's it. I'm going to, I'm going to create more diversity and recurring protection in my business. So it was like the, the lowest point ever because I was making six figures a month at, at uh, just before that and not long after that it's it was just this you know cash flow is a whole other thing than bringing in the money right because you can easily send it out if you're doing paid traffic so that's why if you look at my business now it's just so strong but back then there was this two thousand dollar product that everyone was raving about that was going to teach teach people how to be an affiliate. And I promoted that and I sold 78 or so copies. 
of that product. And my bonus was I will coach you while you go through the product. So I opened up, I, I got a domain. I went into partnership with a mentoring student who I'd been coaching. I actually started my high level program before my low level one. I put a $700 per month recurring PayPal button on a page on my website. And I said, if you want to learn how to do affiliate marketing or SEO, uh, then click on the button and we'll get started. And this guy in Switzerland clicked on the button. And in just a short time, he, he added hundreds of dollars per day to his marketing because he was very smart and already doing well. And he interrogated me too uh, and did reference check for me. I didn't find out about it till later, but he was <laughs> very thorough because he was from a Swiss banking community. Oh, wow. Anyway. He was such a good implementer. I said, you know, will you help me with this form? And uh, he helped me research solutions. We um, we got my buddy Dave Wooding on board to look at setting up the tech. And this guy really helped me drive the project. And so I set up this community and I tipped in the 78 people on a trial that would start billing after the trial period. And I was a bit hesitant to do this because I didn't know if it was risky or not, but I, I explained it very clearly. And I put them on the $67 a month after their 60-day free trial. So the deal was I'm going to coach you for two months. So I had this forum with no content, nothing in it. So like, in how much content do you need to start a community? Zero. <laughs> the promise was that I would coach them through the course. And every week when the course came out, I would publish a discussion that corresponded with the topic and I would answer their questions. And lo and behold, most of the people stayed. And around about this time, I had accidentally got into the speaking business. Um, I, I was following this forum online, the Warrior Forum, and they were having a meetup and we we're going to do a local meetup. So I went to meet some other members and I put together a presentation called Traffic and Conversions dead set traffic and conversions geez i think somebody uh, uh snatched that from you <laughs> it's a good name I'll, you know it's a great name i don't know if it'll ever fly dan but anyway uh <laughs> i presented this presented this uh traffic and conversions presentation and uh they loved it and then the next thing you know i'm in sydney visiting a mate of mine at, and he's speaking at a conference some Spruker's conference about um, wealth or whatever, and they had an internet speaker. And he said to me, listen, I've got to go back home early. You do my presentation. I'm like, what? <laughs> said, no, no, I'll tell the promoter because you know more about this stuff than I do. And I, I knew that I had this presentation on my laptop and it was the following day. So anyway, I went home and I did up an offer for $4,000 and I went and presented and I just glazed their eyes over. This, like I just bombarded them with a fire hose of information that was way past their level. Like it was totally out of step with, with where they were at. And one lady went up to the back of the room and purchased this $4,000 product. And I was so excited. Like someone got it. She understood what I was talking about and appreciates it. And then she goes, listen, James, I don't know anything about what you just talked about, but you seem really honest. <laughs> you know, I later on discovered that she pretty much buys every program at every event all year long because she did, didn't get well with her husband and was escaping in this world of info product seminars and she, like, she was literally spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on info products so it wasn't oh as goodness. special as I thought but I, how do I get I her name amazed. on just, my list <laughs> uh, she was, don't worry she will already be on it <laughs> uh, She's also a super lovely lady. So, uh, and it was one, she's probably my earliest super fan. You know, she just stuck by me. She came to all my conferences. She, and I did, did, did help her whenever she asked, but she wasn't too, too asky because she was always busy traveling and doing courses. Anyway, I thought it was pretty insane that I got $2,000 for just speaking for 90 minutes. And I then, contacted a, a speaking company in Australia and I said, hey, I'm, I'm speaking now. And he said, yeah, sure. You have come and speak to my audience and see if you're any good before I put you on the platform. And I uh, went up to his audience. I flew up to Queensland on my own dime and um, spoke to his conference and they, they were just floored. They loved it. And he said, okay, I'm going to put you on stage. And he put me on the World Internet Summit with 600 people in the room 
and I sold a $2,000 program. And initially, there was 36 people bought it. And by the end of the conference, I had 70 or 80 people had bought it. <laughs> nice. And that, that was just like, wow. You know, like I was getting half of that for myself. So I got like $80,000 from this 90-minute preso. Now, that's that's probably my highest effective hourly rate at this point in my life. Because um, wow. yeah, that's, that's more than a few hundred dollars, isn't it? And all I had to do was put on a little workshop the week later, which I'd learned to do from my Maverick thing, which is a whole other story about how I won access to this million-dollar club um, the year prior in Yannick Silver's group by by entering a competition. And that, that's like should have put that in the book, but it was, that's like, that was a very interesting story. But uh, I had to run this event and for the event, I did the same thing. I, I gave everyone 60 days access to my community and I'll coach them in there after the event and I'll put the recordings. No, actually I sold the recordings separately at this time because it was a partnership. And I had my friend Dave build some tools that were used inside the community to be able to enable people to build websites with a push of a button which was a huge feature. So super fast results, as it was called back then, it started in 2009 and it, it was um, the beginning of 2009. I ran that for four years with my partner. In the end, it became a bit lopsided where I was answering pretty much all the questions and um, bringing 99.9% .9 of the customers to the, the membership and in the end, I said, listen, this is no longer like a 50-50 thing. Can we adjust the mix or can I buy it from you or can you buy it from me? And we ended up not really getting anywhere with it. I, I He never made me an offer. Um, I made him an offer, which was um, very, very generous. I got told by others it was too generous, but that's fine by me. And in the end, we just couldn't agree. So I started a new community called Fast Web Formula and ran it in parallel, but by about three months, pretty much everyone migrated across because they were there for me. And I put all my information products in there, which made it very appealing. Ah, that was a good incentive. And then after a few years, I changed it to super fast business. I brought all my businesses. I had an SEO business. I had a website business. I had um, my mentoring. I had um, fast food formula. I had my internet marketing speed blog. I had all these things. I had a bo affiliate bonus site called Buy With Bonus. So I brought all my things back to one domain, super fast business. And I put my website business, my SEO business, my coaching community, my affiliate bonus product recommendations, my blog, podcast, all there, rebranded. I've changed names on businesses more than most people have had hot dinners. <laughs> so don't be afraid of it. And in the end, I actually migrated off my SEO business and my website business to their own domains and I sold them both. And I incorporated, uh, now I just got my podcast membership and my recommended products page is just in one home. And that business is a seven figure business. And to the side of that, I've kept Silver Circle as its own premium brand. It, I think of it like AMG is to Mercedes Benz. And that's where I deal with the high level customers. And that actually has been going since that $700 PayPal payment is when I took on my individual customers and, and eventually created a group program. And that group program's um, been going continuously except for a three-month gap at one point where I retooled and uh, put it into a different community. And Silver Circle uh, is a very strong premium sort of coaching brand as in, unto its own as, as a standalone unit. You've built a phenomenal business that, like I said, you, you've been able to build a business that supports your lifestyle, that allows you to work very little yet get really big results. In fact, there's something I want you to talk about in work less, make more. I, I, don't quote me exactly. This is close. You said something like an effective work day is about energy management, not time management. So you need to shift your thinking to be about doing less and and not beating yourself up about it or something like that. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I think we all get trained. Because, and I'll tell you why. And here's why what you said two years ago, you're leaving life on the table, hit me so hard upside the head is because, you know, I've had it, I, I've had a limiting belief in my head the entire life that, 
you know, you you want to earn more, you got to work more. And you're saying the opposite. Yeah. So we, we've got um, artificial bonds to things that just aren't necessarily true because it really starts when we're young. I, I be- believe uh, partially um, the school system was probably created in the time of the textile era where, you know, parents – were off and even kids were off manning machines, you know, doing the weaving fabrics and stuff. And school, they needed someone to put the kids during the day to get rid of them. Uh, and even to this day, and let's not even talk about the US school system, which doesn't rank very well in the global scheme of things, but even Australia, which has a, a very good education system, towards the end of term, they're still just showing them videos. <laughs> um, it's like they're, you know, they're there. They're there for the particular time, not for a particular result. And then we go into a job. We, we actually, most of us, sell our time for, for money. And only when I went into the sales arena did that sort of switch from salary to performance-based. And if you think about your business now as an entrepreneur, we're in a performance-based environment. And it, we don't have to be stuck with this idea that time equals the result. Uh, cl- classic, simple scenarios, you can buy other people's time. So if you wanted to run a business that only takes a few hours a week, then you buy a labor force to do everything that you don't want to do. And if you can have an offer that brings in you more money than your costs, you would make a profit and you could have quite a leveraged business. So when I had my SEO business, I was probably only spending an hour or two a month on that business and it was generating over a million dollars a year in revenue, and it was running at a pretty healthy profit margin, uh, which I probably shouldn't talk about because I sold that business, and I want to respect the owner, but it was a very profitable business. For the amount of time I put into it, it was a stratospheric effective hourly rate, Uh, and I just hired plenty of people to run it, and we had 38 people in that business unit. Now, the amount of content that we had to create as an SEO business was substantial, so you, you know I wasn't going to be writing the articles. I can't write 600 articles a month. Uh, And, you know, I shouldn't be allowed near a keyboard anyway because I'm not that good at spelling. I can't type Hmm. and my articles aren't really that compelling because I don't have the super skills that someone like you would have. So uh, that's how you you do it. You, You just start to break down this idea that time equals money or hard effort equals money. Because I've seen people digging ditches by the side of the the road to install pipes, you know, the road workers. I reckon they're working really hard because I used to do jobs like that, loading, uh, unloading containers of timber that had been brought to Australia in a timber yard. That job sucked. The timber was so smelly and it was wet and it was we were, it was hot and it was dark and it was dangerous. And then just for fun, the, the forklift drivers would go and get those detonators from the train tracks and nail them to the top of a piece of timber. And when you're walking out of the 20-ton container, the shipping container, they would drop it so that it would just go... <laughs> you like, you'd think the whole world's exploding. And the stick would go flying and smash off the roof. And it's a miracle that I survived that. Anyway, you can work really hard for a low wage. And I also think it's possible to, to work a lot less for a high wage if you structure things, if you set up things to get, get you paid recurring instead of one time, if you hire people in to do the jobs that you don't want to do or shouldn't do or that you could get for a low value. Um, then they start to shift the tide on that. And and certainly, if you've agreed to sell your time for money on an hourly rate, then I would question, is that the only way that you could do it? Could you get paid per piece? Could you get paid on a result? Like copywriting is a great example. Do you want to get paid as a copywriter at like $50 an hour to write? Okay, like 10 hours, there's $500. Or would you like to get paid $500 for the piece and you can knock it out in 30 minutes? You know, you probably spend four hours and 30 minutes stressing about it and then 30 minutes actually scribbling something to send off (laughs) just before the deadline. That is accurate. (laughs) would you like to, uh, would you like to get paid, uh, you know, a percentage of the sales that this piece of copy writes and not even 
you know, maybe you get paid a retainer up front, maybe not, but maybe you get paid a performance. Maybe that piece of copy could generate you $50,000 in royalties in the life of that copy. So there's always a different way to, to structure things. And my purpose with the book is to point out some different ways we might think about it. So yes, the other thing that I discovered is that um, I was able to build my business to replace my full-time salary. So I was working 70 hours a week for my $300,000 a year. And I could replace that with my business that I built by myself in my part-time from 9.30 till 2 or 3 in the morning, um, pretty much seven days a week. I was able to replace my $300,000 a year with a million dollars a year um, eventually, but or even $2 million a year beyond that. And actually, the more my business matures and the more leverage I get with uh, having a better team, having great business models, up, uplifting my customer type, uh, charging rates that are more in line with the value that I create, etc., I believe that most people could actually get to um, at least $500 per hour and probably $1,000 per hour if they only work on the right things and they bring leverage to the party. So it's not about more, it's about um, being effective. And there are certain times of day when we're just really good at doing stuff and beyond a certain point, you just get blunt and it's, it's pointless. I know if I surf for more than two hours, I'll start falling off a bit because I get too tired. And, you know, so an eight hour day for surfing wouldn't necessarily be a more effective day than a really amazing one hour in the absolute perfect prime conditions when you have your maximum strength and full focus. You, you would get um, a better result in that one hour than you would if you tried to spread it over eight. Well said. Well, Hey, we got to wrap things up, but I really appreciate you doing this. I didn't even, I, I got a bunch more questions that we didn't get to. So I hope you'll come back. Um, work less, make more the counterintuitive approach to building a profitable business and a life you actually like. So, um, I'm sorry, an a, a life you actually love <laughs> way more important. You love it than like it. So how do people get that? I would suggest just go to Amazon. It'll be on Amazon there uh, and soon Audible, which will be good too for the listeners amongst us. Oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. You're going to do. All right. Good. Glad to hear it. I'll get the I'll get the Audible book, too. And when if people want to know more about you, is there one entry point into the world of James Shramko? Superfastbusiness.com. Great. Well, James, thanks again for doing this. I really appreciate it. A uh, lot more stuff I'd like to ask you if you'll agree to come back someday. I would happily come back. And you're very good at extracting these stories out of me, some of which I may not have ever talked about before. They just seem to flow out of me when I'm talking to you for some reason. It's your dulcet tones. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> thanks again, James. I appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Dan. Canine Crew, before you run off, I want to remind you, Doberman Dan has set up an off-the-chain hotline. Call in, tell us you love us. It's even better if you tell us you hate us. It doesn't matter what you say. All you have to do is call in, leave a message. The number is 321-424-6043. Again, off-the-chain hotline, 321 424 6043. This is the